Who owns it? Uh, it's uh, eighty percent owned by a Ghanaian and some Indian group, and then uh, so and then I think uh, PMC. PMC is a shareholder. Yes, yes, and I think uh, Bank of Ghana too. That's also coming. As shareholders, cause of this gold thing that we need to uh, what do you call it uh, hold our reserves. I'm quite excited because. And I think my first meeting with you, is it two years ago here, there's a comment I made that, and it's out there, even a child in the womb of the mother, Ghania knows, uh, that we have not benefited so much from our minerals as we should. One of the main reasons, and this is very important, and I also want the public to know, one of the reasons why people say we've not benefited from our minerals the way we should benefit, eh, primarily is due to the fact that value is not added here. Mm. That's where you make the money. Value is not added here. So since 1941, bauxite has been going out raw. 1941, okay? It means the bauxite mine was built in the course of the Second World War. Mm -hmm. 1939 to 1945, mm -hmm. yes, and the mine was set up. Uh, if you look at uh, what Nkrumah was trying to do, the, the brain behind the Kosobunam and all those things. So it's like we send bauxite out raw and import processed bauxite, which is alumina, mm -hmm. to refine at Varco. You know, case of the Kosobu thing. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't add up. It doesn't make sense to some of us. Mm -hmm. You take the bauxite raw, import refined bauxite which is alumina vacuum and then you also refine it further to aluminum ingots and do other stuff from it mm. and so the whole idea of uh, government taking certain drastic and strong policies in the mining sector is to reverse this kind of thing so enter GIADEC, okay GISDEC, to ensure that we do these things for bauxite it's a bit different it's not as ordinary as good because you see, there are certain associated infrastructure that must go with the whole refinery thing. Mm. You know, the issue of power, you know, you know, railways and all those. It's not like good. We can you can mine good anywhere and move it, just fly. So we got to be a bit patient. So it's work in progress. The other is manganese. Manganese, we started exporting manganese in 1916. <laughs> you know, 1916, around the 180 years. Uh, we still have huge deposits to go for decades to come. Fortunately, again, because of this government policy of adding value, we've concluded discussions and sign off. Uh, that's why we went to China with the company. Uh, so we're going to see a $450 million manganese refining being built to refine the manganese here and produce all kinds of products. That's good news. So with this gold refining that to be commissioned by the vice president today, of course I'll be there. From here I'll go there. My minister will also be there. With the manganese thing, that's going to use gas. Okay, so the issue of power is very crucial. Mm. And this bauxite thing, we give ourselves a five-year window from now. Mm. We should be seeing our bauxite being refined locally. We should see that for gold. We should see that for manganese. Already some industrial minerals, what some also call developmental minerals, are being used locally. So Twyford, that's my favorite factory, that produces ceramics and all kinds of sanitary waste. They mm -hmm. use five minerals, limestone, kaolin, fespa, tack, and clay. Again, lithium. Mm -hmm. uh, the fespa, fortunately, when we got the report, uh, Twyford people said they'll, they'll take it up. So within the next five years, ten years, we should see lots of value addition going on and then now we can begin to say that mining is benefiting us so value addition is one of the routes to go the other has to do with indigenizing the sector i'm just summarizing mm. by that what do we mean we keep saying we don't own the mines and that like the last week these billions we're talking about i got a lot of message i'm sure you also got a message mm. that how much is being kept here mm. Is it not the case that these billions Martin was telling you they are also going back? How do you deal with the problem? You indigenize the sector. That is not to say that we are anti foreign or we don't want foreign investors. I gave the example of Codeco in Chile. Codeco is a state owned mine. Mm -hmm. 
you know, is, is, you know, until recently the biggest producer of copper in the world. So it produces more copper than even BHP and Rotinto. So you go to Chile, copper is everything to them. Chile is copper, copper is Chile, like oil in Saudi or like gold in Ghana. So Cordeco is purely state-owned, exists side by side, BHP and, and Rotinto. Even Chile that has, you know, so much reserves of lithium, our quarter and the second producer, uh, they are also changing their strategies and policy. They've, they've asked Codeco and Enami, the state-owned mine, to prepare the grounds so as they move forward. So how are we indigenizing the sector? We are encouraging Ghanaians to come into the sector and own mines. And there are several ways you can do it. One is through the root of the stock exchange. So Atlantic Lithium has listed. Asante Group has listed, and more will be listing uh, per the LI 2431, the 2020 law. Another way is for equity firms, you know, institutions that run the various hedge, you know, funds and co, to put in their billions. Okay, so institutions that run tier four, tier three can go and invest there. SNIT, I, I will always mention it. You see, if SNIT has put in billions years ago, they can, they can tell the companies that we want to take some of the money. In these interesting times, $2,400 an ounce. You see, even if they are putting, let's say, $10 million last year, giving it to, let's say, the Asante Group, okay, and say they want to cash in now, they are in money portal. I mean, it is in this same country that an institution gave Asante Gold $100 million, CD equivalent, at an interest rate, and they took gold. Mm. They pay back. So indigenization has several routes. Listen to stock exchange, companies taking equity. You can even give money for good. There's nothing wrong in me saying that because the way they are set up, if you look at the architecture, they can also do that. So for example, MIV can say, hey, I'm giving gold fields $10 million. Give it to me in gold. You understand? Uh -huh. And then they can take it. When prices go up, assuming they did that last year, the average price of gold was 1900 so they can now say, I want it. Or once the gold you've given to me, they are holding it in Bank of Ghana or some boat somewhere in UK or Euro, two, four, as against 1900, $500 difference. You bought it when it was 1900 with $10 million. You just sell. They make money for the state. You understand that? That's what I'm saying that when people talk about this rig thing, I get worried. It, it, you just, you got to be patient. Okay, yes, but good. And it's, it's not ending now. Mm. So. <laughs> We'll look at the, the figures, but then people were also interested in what is driving this gold craze. Let me just repeat. Aggressive buying by central banks across the globe. Mm. They are just buying like never before. You know, I keep telling you gold is different from other minerals. It's, it's like currency. That's number one. The Chinese demand is also fueling that. They love gold. Now, I'm even told they love gold more than the Indians. Okay? That's number two. And then remember, too, you can't take away geopolitics. Uh, this Hezbollah, you know, Israel, Palestine thing, it's making all of us, you know. And, and one thing is that the, the little risks mm. investors flee to safety. Mm -hmm. The easier way is, you know, go and hold gold. Then, of course, whatever happens in the U.S. is also crucial for gold because, one, a cut of the world's GDP comes from the U.S. So if U.S. economy is not doing well, like last week like this, the data on unemployment disappointed. So it caused that spike. Do you understand? And then, of course, there's a relation between the dollar and the gold. If the, if the dollar becomes stronger, people pour in money. If the dollar falls, then gold price goes up. And then interest rates, too. If you cut interest rates, okay, I mean, they, they rush to gold. That's why high interest rate is not good for us. But what we didn't understand was that was interest rate were high some months ago. I mean, it defied that good logic that we have. So uh, when we hear that the Federal Reserve Bank and some banks in Europe are planning to cut interest rate further in September, it means that the, the bull keeps running for good. So mm -hmm. in summary, these are the things that are driving the gold price. I don't know whether... Right, let, let me just ask you this. Uh, this refinery which is going to be commissioned today. Yes, lunchtime. Will that be the first refinery? There's one in airport. Yes. And they do some coins, they do other stuff, and mm -hmm. they're also uh, trying to up their game and upgrade. Yes. So that's but, also a refinery. That's also a refinery. Mm -hmm. But the one that is going to be commissioned, it's, 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 it's a great one. Mm -hmm. Super. So mm -hmm. what I'm going to do is that 
I've spoken to the Ghanaian CEO. Mm -hmm. Next week, Tazi, I'm available, I'll bring him. Mm -hmm. And then we'll bring videos and pictures to come and show to the general. The Ghanaian CEO of the new... Yes, mm -hmm. yes. You know, there are a lot of Ghanaians that are involved. It's okay. all part of the, uh, the, the, the craze to indigenize the sector. So mm -hmm. it's all patient. I admit that things have not been well as a nation. Uh, maybe before Anne shows us the tables and the figures for us to do the rest of the explanation. Mm. Randy, let us understand this and I want to underscore this statement. Mm. We have run the mines before as a nation. Mm. The Kodeko team, we've done it before. You remember a champion mm. taking commanding heights of the economy? Okay? So, Boasi mine and all those things. I mean, we dominated that. We sold the mines. We sold our interests. AGC, you know, we sold them gradually. That is it. Takwa mine, that monster mine in Takwa today, was state-owned. It was at the then State Gold Mining Corporation, headquarters, Minerals Commission office. Prestia was state-owned. Dunkwa Continental, they were even dredging in the water body doing it properly, not the kind of thing we see. So all these were state-owned mines, okay? Uh, manganese and coal, we have significant interest in all those things. But we mismanaged them, like Ghana Airways, like the various Gheok family, okay? Gheok Footwear, all those things. Those, those state enterprises that were not properly managed. You understand? So I don't want people to think that uh, these mines that are owned by Ango Goda Shanti, Gold Foods, New Mountain Co. is something that is recent. When we had the opportunity, we didn't do it well. But that is not to say that we should give up. So now the state is coming in through a, a better route. Okay, taking stake, using the MIF angle, encouraging Ghanaians to, to, to pour in money, uh, educating uh, this uh, tier 3 and then tier 4 holders of those billions to put in money there. And of course, pushing them to the stock exchange because I don't understand why new months should, let's say, list in New York or in London or they should list in the various stock exchanges everywhere and then they cannot list in Ghana. And we've done it with Atlantic Lithium. You understand? Yeah. So it tells you that perhaps if we have done this thing 10 years ago, we started 10 years ago, we'll not be where we are. I don't know whether the table is still ready. I don't know that I can read from my 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 the document i've shared with you okay so uh, it's ready we'll, we'll just yes. put it out yes. yes so let's just see the table um, yeah so that's it this is for small scale yeah this is uh yes small scale and then there's another one but let me explain let's let's look at the other one first and then we come to small scale so this is small and large scale yes this is small scale we we'll discuss it too. okay all right so um uh, you have I think it's gone off. You can look at it. I right? can look at the other one. So oh, yeah. you have a small scale and large scale. Just to compare, half year. Uh, I've just received the July figure, but let's discuss this first. Okay. So small scale, that's a production. A million ounces. A little by a million ounces. Between 1st January and 30th June. It gave us close to $1.8 billion in six months. Then last year, same period, did 1.3. And then the value is 3.2. So if you add the two together, that is a $5 billion we saw in Bank of Ghana's report. Of course, in our figure too. I mean, this gives you the, the, the actual value to the minute details. Okay. Help me with something. There's a difference of about 340,000 ounces between yes. large scale and small scale. Small scale. scale. Yes, half, three, year, half year report. Yes, 340,000 yes. ounces. Mm -hmm. But that 340,000 ounces represents almost um, a 100% a, a, a increment in terms of the dollar value. Yes, and if you like, that would be the production of Cardinal when it comes into... Production. Randy, let me say this. But for small game, small scale will have eclipsed large scale. Really? Yes. I mean, look at it. They produce 42%. Mm. That's why I've, 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 I've uh, highlighted that. Yes. So 42% is 
if you like nearly 43 percent okay in fact even 2018 the year we banned small scale they did 48 okay so half year small scale mining that takes place in 12 13 regions in ghana you know produce 43 percent of ghana's gold you understand that? Mm. So, Randy, I brought this figure here for the purposes of public education. Look, if we manage this environment, if we deal with the environmental challenges of small scale mining, okay, 12 regions will clear unemployment in the village. So, you know, you are talking about 3 million. These days, the figures are even higher. Okay, that's why I am in, I am in strong support of allowing. For example, underground mining for small scale, let's say in forest reserve. We lose nothing. Don't let us deceive ourselves. Mm. I'll, I'll keep having this discussion, mm. pushing my personal views. I see the data. Mm. I have a responsibility to tell the public the hard truth. Mm. I have the responsibility to recommend policies to government. Mm. We've said that. Mm. It's up to us to decide where do we go from here. Mm. You understand that? Mm. We, we, you, you don't have any environmental damage, seriously when it comes to allowing small scale people to do underground. And again, I will mention, let, let me say this. Mm. Underground mining is allowed for small scale. The law allows it. So you go to Takwa. Mm -hmm. Practically almost all the small scale operations that are going on in Takwa, mm. over 50,000 plus employees. There's one particular area that has about 5,000 people working. They have mm. all the approvals. They have the license, they have the environmental permit. They also have the EPA. We may have, maybe you and I will have to go there as a tour and look mm -hmm. at that area mm -hmm. there. So I ask myself, if you have huge deposits of gold underground in forest reserves, and these are small scale people find a way and go there. Uh, so far, I've not heard of any accident yet because they just go there, hide, go and pick them. Why don't we allow them and do it lawfully? Mm -hmm. Several thousands that bring in more jobs. The number of people employed in small scale in Takwa is more than what Idua Prim, uh, uh, Goldfish, Takwa, or Prestia put together. Mm -hmm. The three companies will not even give us 10,000, mm -hmm. unless you add the indirect jobs like the contractors. But one operation alone, small scale in Takwa, is giving us 5,000 people, and they will be there for decades. So if you go to Savannah, let me repeat, Savannah where practically today you can step on gold everywhere, Bole, Waka Waka, Tinga, Dakrupe, all those here, and to the entire half going to the Ivorian border. Okay? That whole area, yes, we have Bui National Park and all those things. They go there for some reason. Of course, there are one or two air crops on the surface. But most of them is underground. It was an air crop. Oh, it's just showing on the surface, the rock. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But I'm saying there are a lot of underground deposits. Okay? Uh, the guy's sneaking there and go and do it here and there and all those things. It's not an issue if you like, if you are I'm permitted to use that word because it's not open pit. It's not a water body you see like Pra mm -hmm. and Cobra and Co. You see, so we will need as a nation to ask ourselves, do we say no go area or should we permit them for them to do it lawfully? Mm -hmm. Where they will sink proper because you see, once you decide that they will do it lawfully, that means that the mine inspectors from Minas Commission will come. You have to sink money, you know, do the proper shaft, whether a decline, whatever. We we'll inspect and check that it meets the safety standards, like let's say New Motor under Underground in Subica, or let's say Chirano Underground. Mm -hmm. You have to meet the same standards. The underground, when it comes to small scale and large scale, should not be different. You see, it, you require the same ventilation system and all those things. So those are the things that we at Mincom are pushing for. So I, I will support any day, any time, mm -hmm. allowing underground mining in forest reserve, whether large scale or small scale. Mm -hmm. And I see that huge potential up north for small scale people. Mm -hmm. We need jobs. They can do it properly. The trees, the 700,000 year old trees will still be there. Mm -hmm. Processing will not be allowed in the forest. You, you just take the old body out and process it somewhere because processing can also destroy the flora and fauna. Mm -hmm. So look at it. 42%. Maybe we can look at the other figure too. Okay? And yes. I'll keep pushing that. You know? Uh, so this is it. This is the small scale proper now. Uh, that is 2024. They produce a little of 1 million ounces uh, compared to last year. 
you see, you look at the value and look at the percentage change. So the entire last year production is what? 389. So roughly, production half year. Eh? If you look at the figure, run the curve, yeah. this is very interesting. Production half year is almost three times the entire last year. Production this year, that's a little over 1 million ounces. Yes. Uh -huh. As it is, three, it is three times the production for the whole of last year, right. roughly. Okay? 300, 300, 300. What accounts for that? The, the, the increase in production. Yes. Why, why we are doing three times half year yes. than last year? Yes. I told you the price. Okay? The price. And then, you know, when the grade is very low, you can make it. Okay? What, what will cost you 2000 to produce, now you can sell it. And then, of course, they've also taken advantage of the price to expand production. And look at the value. Half because year. I'm looking at the ounces, the, the increase in the production uh -huh. from a, a, a quantitative point of view. And then the value. Yes. So I'm asking what accounts for the increase from 389,000 ounces to 1, 1 million ounces. Is it that you have a lot more people in there? A lot. Or those who are already in there are expanding? So two things. Or smuggling is reducing drastically. In fact, I can even mention three things. Okay. One. You cannot be oblivious of the prices that have hit the sky, mm. not even the roof. If you like the galaxies, mm. the price has gone up. So even the later he can get, he can sell it. Mm. He can make money. I mean, low grades and things. Uh, at first, they wash throughout a lot of things. They can process all those things. So price is number one. Two, the sheer numbers. Mm. The numbers involved in small scale keep going up every day. Mm. So more people... And then we are giving more licenses and people are also working. Mm. Okay? So numbers, you know, more people, so the volumes are also going up. Then, of course, government reducing the tax from 3%, which was imposed in 2021, to uh, 1.5. So we are beginning to see the benefits of the reduction in the tax mm. over time. Okay, because you impose a tax in 2021, like May. So end of year, we, we had $804 million as receipts. Mm. You know, we lost like 1 million ounces, left these countries too small. It's a fact. I mean, we will not deny it. Mm. So recovery started in 2022, you know, peaked very well in 2023. And now we are beginning to see it now. Mm. Yeah, so it's, it's a, a raft of, you know, factors. But increase in production more people involved so production is going up mm. and of course uh, the price which is one of the key factors so if we put all these things together you can see now so it's talking about 1.7 or nearly 1.8 billion in 2024 now the entire last year is nearly 800 million so if you like uh, twice the value this year mm. half year than the whole of last year remember the average price of gold last year was 1800 1900 randy so that is it now uh, if you ask me am i still holding on to this my 10 billion prediction if not more my answer will be yes why because let me show you the average price for gold in july now july is the beginning of the First month for the second quarter, right? Second half. Uh, second half. So I take a look at the figure they've sent me. The average price for the month of July was 2,396. Mm. 2,396. Almost 2,4. Almost, if you like, between eighty and hundred dollars higher than the last quarter, the second quarter. Yeah. Okay, second quarter, the average was two three. Yes. So there Close is this, there is this eighteen hundred dollar increase. Yes. In July, than the average, because the, the main thing was the second quarter of this year. That's where the bull was actually running. Now uh, we've done barely ten days in August. That is, we're almost midway into the. Uh, the second, second month quarter. of the second half. And then uh, first August was 2454, second August 2469, third August 2442, fourth 
four four August two four four two, five August two four one one, six August two four one three, yesterday two four zero four, and as of this morning it was trading around two thousand four hundred. So it means that uh, within the last one week, it has been trading around two thousand four hundred. And as I said, even if I use 2,300 as average for third quarter and even average for second quarter. Remember, the average for first quarter was just, it was not even uh, 2,100. Yes. Okay, it was about 20, 30, 20, 50, thereabouts. So the main thing came in the second quarter. Mm. So if you're going to have 2,300 as the average for third quarter and the same for fourth quarter, we're going to uh, mention a figure bigger than $10 billion. Do mm. you understand mm. that? Maybe next week, because we don't have time now, yeah. I know you are going for a meeting. I'm also going to prepare for this great day. Mm. Next week, perhaps the main questions or the main thing that Ghanaians want to know is that this is your $5 billion so far. We want to know how much stayed in Ghana. Okay. It's so important. Okay, very important. And so next week, yes. I'll come out and come and tell the general public mm. how much of the five billion mm. actually stayed in Ghana and right. how did it impact the economy. Okay. Enough of the figures now, because right. that's what they want to you know. In today, oh, five billion, no mini sunny. Yeah. We'll discuss that next week and perhaps the other week. All right. Other than that, it is clear from this mm. and looking at uh, maybe the economic challenges and code that we have that we've all admitted that we are looking at it mm. you can now do you now accept the fact that gold is everything um, don't worry I, I about need, look i need to balance look, it with I know, the, the I know, negatives no i know you and of course myself too yeah i, I take most of the flag or mean come mm. uh, you think i'm happy when i wake up and then they show this girl i'm saying thing mm. we are not mm. we are not happy about that but it tells you that uh, let me use these three words yeah to two years you know ye pa that is, if we deal with the environmental management of small scale mm. very well, okay, this is what will save the nation. Right. That is not to say that we shouldn't focus on agriculture. I love agriculture too. Mm. So you see, in a place where there's underground, people can be mining underground and doing small scale, thousands employed there, and people can be farming on mm. the surface. Mm. What a beauty. Right. Okay. So Martin, we live here today. And uh, thanks for the data and the explanations around the data. And uh, we'll see you next Thursday. And best of luck with the... Uh, I invited family. you, but yes. I think uh, the notice... It's, I it's, wanted you to come and see. In yeah. fact, I wanted for you to come and look at it and then tour the place. Yeah. So maybe next week... We'll find an I will arrange a group of uh, journalists or I'll mm -hmm. go there with you. Okay. Uh, I will have access. No and worries. And you, you, you will see the kind of security that is there. Okay. This All is right. good, not box sites. <laughs> uh, you can just run across a box like a manganese mine, okay. but gold mine, no way. All right, so that's, that's Golden Martin, eh? Golden Martin <laughs> of the Minerals Commission. Anyway, thanks for joining us on the, on the show. Uh,